Well, it's hybrid, it's got room for seven on board, and there's more technology in this thing than you can shake a stick at. It's also off-road capable. You can even get it with diff locks front and rear. This is the GWM Tank 500. This is a really interesting vehicle for the Australian market, and it's gonna provide a cut price competitor to something like a Toyota Land Cruiser Prado, or dare I even say it, the 300 series as well. Now we're going to have a quick look at this car today on our first drive on Australian soil. We're going to dig through the interior, we're going to go off-road and we're going to go on-road. Let's have a closer look. Well, I doubt you're going to miss this Tank 500 in traffic because it definitely has a presence. Have a look at the size of this grille. It's extremely chromey and it's massive. You've got your massive tank badge on the front there, but also you've got LED lighting all the way around this car, which is a nice feature, especially at this price point. 18 inch alloy wheels. No, they're not big 20s or anything like that, but I would prefer that for a four wheel drive that's heading off road. That is a fairly logical size, I think. And another thing that I don't mind about this tank, electric deploying side steps. I've seen these in the aftermarket before and people fitting them to vehicles but I haven't seen them on a brand new vehicle before. So that is pretty cool. Helps you to get in and out. Just watch out though, if you hung up on a rock step and you open the door, you might trash those by accident. But in terms of size overall, this is effectively somewhere in between a Land Cruiser Prado and a 300 series in terms of length. It's a little bit under two meters tall and a bit under two meters wide as well. So it's a reasonably big car but it's only got a two litre turbocharged engine with hybrid assistance. Those outputs are pretty good, but we'll see what it's like to drive in a minute. The 2024 GWM Tank 500 is priced from $66,490 drive away. And that's for the entry level Lux specification, which does come with a relatively high level of standard kit. However, we spent our time in top spec ultra. That adds seven and a half grand to the asking price for $73,990 drive away. And this car is very well loaded with kit. On top of things like a 14.6 inch infotainment display, 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster, 360 degree camera, LED lighting all round, heated front seats and sunroof, the Ultra does up the ante with ventilation, massaging and memory for upfront seats, heating and ventilation for rear outboard seats, Nappa leather trim, an upgraded 12 speaker sound system, electric side steps and an electric deployed third row. There's also second row sunshades and interior ambient lighting, while the locking rear differential is joined by a front locker. So if you're interested in a Tank 500, chances are you're looking at it because of the value for money. And I think when you're sitting inside it, it's hard not to be impressed by the level of quality in here, but also just the level of inclusions overall. So this is top spec that I'm sitting in at the moment. And well, where do I start? Let's start with this big infotainment display to start with. This is a massive unit. It's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, native navigation, and the operating system. No problem. Route guidance is not running. It's also got voice control, as we just heard then, which is a little bit interrupty at times, but it's a pretty good system overall. You've also got a 12.3 inch digital cluster in front of you. That is quite similar to what you get in a Tank 300 as well. Now, one thing I have noticed here is that the only volume control in the Tank 500 is actually on the steering wheel, which for me is a little bit frustrating. I'd love to have another volume dial around here somewhere so the passenger can use it, but also so you can just twist it down and twist it up nice and easily. Maybe a small complaint, but a complaint nonetheless. But in terms of features, okay, let's talk about the seats. We've got heating, we've got ventilation, and we've got massage. We've also got an electric adjustment in the steering column, which is all very nice. And the seating position is relatively high overall. So you can see what's going on. I'm in the lowest position at the moment. It still sits quite high, I think. Visibility is good while you're driving around, and you also get a pretty good 360 degree camera system there. There's also a wireless charging pad here. Your power outlets are hiding, however, down near your inside knee. So there's a USB-C and a USB-A point hiding down there, plus a 12 volt in this little storage nook, which is actually pretty handy, I think. That works well. The center console, that is the same as what you get in a Tank 300 as well. So you've got this sliding compartment here, move that back, and then you've got your two cup holders in there. But I've got to say, the, the build quality, similar to the Tank 300, this is a cheap car relative to the level of inclusions. It's not a cheap car for GWM, however. 
but the quality does feel good. This doesn't feel like it's built to a price and just had a lot of gear thrown at it. It does feel quite solid in here, which is nice. And it's quite comfortable to sit in ergonomically. It's good. Let's have a look what the second row is like. Now here's the second row of the GWM Tank 500, and I'm gonna call something out straight away here. This is a more spacious and comfortable second row than you'll get in a Land Cruiser 300 series. Firstly, this seat actually slides forward and backwards, which is a handy feature to have. That's my driving position up front there. I'm a little bit under six foot tall, and as you can see, I've got bucket loads of leg room on offer. So in actual facts, I can slide this forward quite a bit, It'd still be quite comfortable. I could even tilt the seat back a little bit more as well. That is pretty nice. I've got air vents here. I've got heated and vented seats in the second row, which is quite of a luxury, I think. Lots of controls there for everything that's going on. And I've also got air vents up here. So I think this would be a really nice place to spend a lot of time. And also a pop down armrest in the middle with some cup holders there that pop out. And if the sun's getting a bit too much, you want a little bit of a nap, you can pull that up. So definitely not short of features in here. Let me just pop that down. Sometimes they get a little bit stuck. Similar to the front row, this second row feels really good. But if I move this seat forward to about here, I think that's fair. Let's jump into the third row and see what it's like. All right, I've snuck myself into the third row of this Tank 500. And as you can see, it is a little bit tight. I'd probably have to move this second row seat a little bit further forward so I could fit in here more comfortably. But the floor of the third row here in the footwell is relatively high, so my knees are gonna stay high and headroom is a bit tight as well. Once again, I'm a little bit under six foot tall, so this is probably not as good for adults. This is a little bit better for kids overall. I do have air vents, however, which is really nice. And visibility is actually quite good looking through the front here. I don't feel too trapped or ensconced. Side windows are pretty good. And I've also got cup holders and a kind of extended slot here, which would be good for fitting in a phone or maybe a small tablet or something like that. So it's definitely not all bad. I think it's pretty good in the back, but more for kids on longer trips. <music> I've got to say, I was a bit hesitant about how a two litre turbocharged engine with hybrid assistance would fare in a vehicle of this size. It's not very light, it's around 2.6 tonnes, but in effect, it's actually not too bad. This car combines power sources reasonably well. It's fairly smooth. Sometimes you'd say it's seamless in terms of the power delivery and acceleration, it's not too bad either. Overall, I think it's good enough for this car, but it's not an efficient hybrid. It's worth pointing that out. Now, GWM have said, no, we haven't done this hybrid in terms of efficiency. We've done it for things like, I think, emissions, but also just getting the right amount of power from a relatively small engine. We've averaged around 14, 15 liters per 100 Ks on this current drive we've been doing, which included a fair amount of highway, but also a bit of off-road. So it was as low as 11, but it did creep up to 16 or 17. So depending on your usage, this could be a little bit of a thirsty beast. Now this is a ladder frame chassis. It's got a low range transfer case. It's got independent front suspension and coil sprung, coil sprung rear. Now, did you hear that? That was the car telling me to have a break. I just got in this thing and I've been driving for about one minute since I've started talking. It's got driver fatigue monitoring. It's also got an attention warning thing on the A pillar here to tell you when you're not looking at the road and all sorts of things. And it's a bit onerous. The lane keep assistance system in this new Tank 500 is better than the Tank 300, but this is another source of grievance. So you can turn it off through the infotainment display, but it does get a little bit frustrating. But in terms of ride quality overall, this Tank 500 is pretty good. It does feel a bit firm and jiggly at times over rougher bitumen surfaces. So if you're driving on a lot of country roads and that sort of thing, you'll probably feel a little bit of discomfort at times. It doesn't ride as nicely as some other vehicles out there. More expensive vehicles too, I have to say. Steering is a little bit on the numb side overall. You don't get to feel much of what's going on. It does tend to understeer a little bit, but you gotta drive this vehicle for what it is. It's a big four wheel drive. So don't expect any sort of dynamic ability here. It doesn't sit on the road as nicely as a Land Cruiser 300 or a Land Cruiser Prado for that matter. Uh, it's a little bit recalcitrant, I suppose, I would say, to go around corners. So I think the overall on-road driving experience is probably a pass mark without being overly fantastic in any regard. It's not too bad, and you've got to counter that against the asking price 
of course. This is a relatively cheap car for the amount of metal you're getting and the amount of spec as well. So, you know, you've got to keep that into account. And when you pull that in, it is fairly impressive overall. But one area where it's definitely more outright impressive is off-road capability. It's got diff locks front and rear in top spec, which is a great thing to have for any off-roader. And it definitely helps here. But this does feel similar to the Tank 300 in terms of just having reasonably supple suspension, especially at the rear. It feels reasonably stable overall. It doesn't get too crossed up when you're going through ruts and that sort of thing. So this definitely does walk the walk off-road. Our testing was fairly limited to start with though. We drove a couple of fairly challenging sections there. The car did well, but there is more to find out in that regard. And we'll also find out more about things like three ton towing, payload capabilities, and that sort of thing. But yeah, I've just got more things beeping off at me here at the moment. That is certainly one of the things that I find a little bit frustrating about this car. But overall, I've got to say, for the asking price, I think a lot of people will really love this Tank 500. Are you going to be trading in your 300 series for this? Maybe not just yet. Y62 patrol owners, maybe not as well, but this is a massive step forward for the GWM brand. It's similar to the Tank 300, but it's just a bigger version of that. You can fit more on board. It's got a bit more spec and features as well. And this hybrid powertrain, no, it's not the most efficient out there, but I've got to say, it's not a bad jigger. Just don't expect it to be the last word in terms of refinement. I have noticed a bit of wind noise on our initial drive and the ride quality, well, it does feel a little bit stiff on some surfaces. There is only one powertrain available for the Tank 500, which is shared with the smaller Tank 300 hybrid. This offers combined outputs of 255 kilowatts and 658 newton meters, most of which is developed by a two liter turbocharged petrol engine. This runs through a nine speed hybrid torque converter automatic gearbox, along with an electric motor and a small lithium ion battery. While hybrids often do claim a big advantage in terms of efficiency, we didn't see such a thing in this regard on our first drive test. Against GWM's claim of 8.5 litres per 100 k's, we saw a number much higher, around 13 litres per 100 during our test. Well, GWM is definitely moving some things around in the Australian market, and this Tank 500 is the next big step for them. You can see a Tank 300 behind me over there. That was a pretty big step for the brand as well, but this is an even more audacious move forward, I think. In terms of value for money, it's pretty clear to see. This, well, it's not a cheap car for GWM, but in terms of the value proposition, I think that is there in spades. And the driving experience, well, this hybrid isn't the most efficient thing in the world. It actually can be relatively thirsty, but I've got to say, it rides a little bit firm, but it's not too bad. And the steering feel, okay, that's not too bad either, but the off-road capability is really good. So we're looking forward to getting this car in for more testing, but I've got to say, initial impressions of this car are pretty good. Now, this is our first taste of the Tank 500 in Australia. It's a relatively short drive, and there are a lot more questions to find out about this car in the fullness of time. And I can tell you, we're gonna be spending more time in this car in the future when we can. So if you have any questions about this Tank 500, let us know in the comments below. We'll do our best to get back to you and answer them all. But as always, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel on YouTube, and if you want the full review of this car, head over to drive.com.au.